Hi everyone, I'm Dina Driver. I'm a publisher in Regina, Saskatchewan. Driver Works Inc. is my company, and I am proud to have republished Tunnels of Time, Moose Jaw Time Travel Adventure Number One by the amazing Mary Carrollton Bishop, who you see on your screen there. Hello, Hi, Mary. Everyone. So Mary and I, as part of this tour, we're really a part of this tour. Well gave you a sneak about what's going to happen. We were pleased to go to Moose Jaw and launch the book Underground in the Tunnels of Moose Jaw. And we also went on a very private couple of tours that we want to take you on with us today. So Mary um, can tell you a little bit about what's happening next. Right. So come along with us. We're going to go on some underground tours. We're going to start in the tunnels and move from there. Um, So here I am standing in the um, tunnels of Moose Jaw. If you are lucky enough to go on a tunnel tour, you would go right through this area too. And I love the photo on the right of the old, old typewriter that, that Remington. I was lucky in my age, I got to work on an electric typewriter. I'm sure most of you have never seen a typewriter like that, but uh, it adds to the authenticity, the realness of the things you would see in the tunnels. I started working on uh, an, as a journalist many, many, many years ago. I, I used a Remington a few times in high school, I think maybe for a typing class, but uh, yeah, electric was mostly the thing. And nowadays yeah. computers and cell phones and all of that wonderful gadgetry. Mm -hmm, for sure. So the top picture is Moose Jaw in the 1920s. And the pot bottom photo is a modern day picture that we took in recent months. And I like this photo, these two photos together, because it reminds me that an author who is going to write uh, about a place historically needs to do the research to go with that. And so I had to read some books about Moose Jaw in the 1920s. I looked at a lot of photos because when I go to describe the things that you see in Moose Jaw in the 1920s, you need to see the things that you would see, like the old cars and uh, maybe a horse and buggy and things like that. So what the buildings look like, what the streets the look buildings. like. Yeah, yeah I love these two pictures because you can see um, the same buildings in the pictures. Uh, if you look really closely at the back, you see a building on the right. And if I remember right, I think that's actually called the Walter Scott building, that tall one. And then on the left in the uh, 1920s photo, you can see the top, the clock, the, um, I guess you'd call that a clock tower as well. That's the top, it was the police station and now it's the city hall. Mm -hmm. And you can just barely see it in the back of the modern photo as well. And somewhere in the top picture, just a little bit on the left, that's where the actual Tunnels of Moose Jaw tour is, uh, starts nowadays. And the Tunnels of Moose Jaw go along underneath these buildings on the right side and the left side. And that's the world that started Mary's imagination for this Tunnels series. That's right. So in the book, Tunnels of Time, the very first thing, well, one of the very first things you're going to see when you open it up is that map. And to me, that's a really important part of the book because it helps the reader, it helps me to visualize where the tunnels um, went, obviously the underground tunnels. Uh, so they go north and south, they went north and south along Main Street, as well as they went east and west along each of the, the sides. And there were lots of stories that talked about the different tunnels. We highlighted in the book, the tunnels that Andrea and the characters in the book use in the story. And so that's why you see the tunnels that you see there. Some of the buildings that you see on these on the, the map um, exist still today, some do not. And part of the process of publishing the book as the publisher and editor, I wanted a little bit more information. I was having trouble visualizing how did the tunnels get underneath the train station? How did Andrea get under there? And how did she get up into the area that Mary wrote about? And where did all the action happen? And how did they get over to underneath to the other side of the tracks at the very bottom, you see there's an underpass. And so that led us to do more research even and ask some more questions and make some phone calls. And so that was what allowed us to uh, have this wonderful tour of underground uh, moose jaw. And um, we'll share a couple more of those, well, lots more of those photos later. But right now, what you see is what the inside of the book looks like. And the illustrations are done by a wonderful illustrator, 
Wendy Nordell. The, the photo that's the, or the uh, illustration, sorry, that's the bottom right hand side, you see Tony pulling an armoire away from the wall and Andrea is looking on. And as um, in Moose Jaw, in many of the buildings along Main Street and the hotels, you would find tunnel entrances concealed or hidden by a large cupboard called an armoire. And so that was very common to, um, to see something like that. As well, there were many stories about Capone being in Moose Jaw. It's only been in the last about four years, I think it was 2016, that um, there was actual proof that Capone was ever in Moose Jaw. And so the picture you see there is Al Capone, who was a very famous gangster from the United States, from Chicago. And there were lots of stories about Al Capone taking the Sioux Line Railway up to Moose Jaw to avoid the police when things were getting tough for him, getting hot for him in Chicago. And um, so Capone, we know now, actually used the tunnels to go from place to place unnoticed in Moose Jaw. And so very quickly, Andrea runs into Capone in the story. So what you see here is the train station at the very bottom of, of Main Street. And um, that clock tower, which actually plays a pretty important part in the story as well. But it was um, the train station. The These train are the main doors, right? That started you there. on this journey. Right. And it looks almost like those were two different buildings. And that's kind of what stopped me for a minute there. But they are, they abut each other, those two, those two buildings. But that main entrance um, back when I very first, the very first time I got, I came to Moose Jaw to uh, take a tunnel tour, um, that building was dilapidated. This tunnel train station was dilapidated. It was falling apart and they were talking about demolishing it and building something else there. And I went on the tunnel tour that you actually took two blocks north. And I went through that tunnel tour three times with my family. I was so excited about the things I was learning about gangsters being in Moose Jaw and about the Chinese Canadians that were living and hiding in the tunnels. And so at the end of the th third tour, we were walking south down Main Street, getting ready to just sort of disperse. And I was asking so many questions that they took us over to this train station and opened that door and we got to go in and look. And at that time, um, everything was in disarray. There were beams that had fallen, lights that had fallen off the ceiling. And we got to actually walk in there. And I think that was one of the things when my imagination really started taking off for me about what a story um, about the Moose Jaw Tunnels could be. So inside the train, this is the train station. This is what we got to see. So directly across from those outside doors, you can see these doors almost look identical. You walk across the parquet flooring there and then you would go down those stairs to actually catch your train. And you can see the sign above there that says two trains. Um, and then along the other side that's out of the photo were long, long, long benches that you would sit on and wait for your train. So this is a display they have in there now. They're showing you what the benches look like. Obviously they cut that bench and, um, uh, but you can see what it looked like and a uh, conductor standing behind with, with lots of, of photos. So they've filled that area in with a display of the train station. So from the first time that you saw this building inside, that was more than 25 years ago. And that it was not refinished as it is today, as we were lucky enough to see it last fall. But they've still kept this part of the history there for people to see those stairs going down into the basement and down underneath where this is the part where Mary's imagination kicked in and she started to imagine some of the um, action happening underneath the stairs and underneath the main floor and the ground level of Moose Jaw. Right. So we asked some questions. I asked Mary questions and that led to us making phone calls to other people in Moose Jaw to see if there was a possibility that she and I, as part of the book launch for Tunnels of Time, um, which also gonna do a side story here, look for us on our Facebook pages, I'm Mary Harrelkin Bishop or Driver Works Inc. We have a lovely video 
that where you can actually come with us on a tour of the Moose Jaw Tunnels because that's where we launched this beautiful book in the tunnels. Yeah, it's a great video. You'll you'll yeah. love it. So check really. that out. But as, on later that day, this is when we did this tour of underneath the liquor store, the modern day liquor store, which is part of the big original uh, 1921 train station in Moose Jaw. So here's Mary going down the stairs. Right. So that's what you're seeing is us going down the stairs and uh, and then turning around and this photo taken looking up the stairs and you can see how old the building is. Um, just yeah, it was quite the experience to be down to actually be down there. We were so excited for this and another photo of us just standing down there. And again, you can see how old the building is. Obviously, they don't use that basement for really anything anymore. We did this in September 2020, thus the masks pandemic, pandemic tour. <laughs> yeah. And this was uh, really interesting. Um, this room originally says powder room. So it was, uh, oh, I would say a woman's lavatory mm -hmm. or washroom facility. And now it's a storeroom used. Um, all of the things that you see in the photo on the right hand were like pieces of the fa facade of the the face of the building that would that had fallen off probably with age and the things have just let go and they were collecting them and the, the gentleman that gave us the tour said that what they would hope to do one of these days was to actually put them back on the building so we'll see if they ever do that but we're getting quite a collection there but it gives you an idea of the age of this building 1921 yeah. and when we made our original phone calls we were told that this portion underneath the liquor store part of the building had wood floors this, this has been uh, cemented since then, but yeah. there were sections of this part of the building that we were allowed to go into. There were washroom facilities. There was like a small eating room, a cafeteria mm. area where this building used to have a hotel as part of it. And they told us that would have been like a main dining room for passengers when they were waiting to catch their train or coming off of a train. So mm -hmm. there were some really interesting um, pieces of the building that we were privileged to have a sneak peek at. And then yeah, back and up. then yeah, back up and out that door, and then around to the front of the building again. Here we are, and now we're going to go tour into the red brick building. And, and that building originally, the, yeah, it's it it abuts it attaches right to the train station, and originally it was built as a a hotel with a very grand dining room as well for passengers who were coming and going in Moose Jaw, and. Um, if I remember correctly, at the peak, there was something like 50 trains a day coming into Moose Jaw. I can barely fathom that many trains coming and going. Yep, Hub City, right? Is that Moose Jaw's nickname? Little Chicago? Uh, Little Chicago, yeah. So coming down the stairs here, having our tour again, you can see how ancient, how old the building looks. Standing in the, in the main um, hallway there with the, the gentleman. And again, the basement is not used for much anymore and uh, we were just very lucky that uh, we could get a tour. Here you're looking at a very old light switch that's, that's actually push button. I don't think I've ever used one in my life <laughs> but there it is. And the signal room for the train station and um, I'm holding my phone there, my flashlight phone or the flashlight on my phone so that we can get a good picture of this piece of equipment down in that room. And just another look at what was in the room, this uh, shelving with lots of cubby holes in it. This, these two photos are really cool because it shows you a very old authentic door that uh, has obviously been in that building since it was built and an old, old luggage carrier that should probably be donated to the Western Development Museum. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, just authentic things. This elevator that they still use um, is a very old elevator, elevator um, an original in the building and a cargo cart or wagon that would you would put cargo on there and then haul it out to the trains. And they have modern day lighting, obviously fluorescent lights, but I, I don't know. Yeah, we're showing an exit sign so we could find our way out. Yeah, helpful. <laughs> yeah. And this and is the most exciting part of this whole tour right now. You're coming up to. 
doesn't look like much to uh, to those who don't know. And for Mary and I, when, as we approached this, we just thought, okay, another hallway. But then we saw this hole in the wall mm -hmm. and we did not expect to see this. But you'll see the pail that's on the floor on the on the floor there, that became very helpful because as we got closer, the gentleman who was our tour guide for this very private tour, um, we asked him, what's the hole in the wall? And he said, oh, that's where the stairs are. And Mary and I became excited like little children. We were so thrilled because up until this point, the stairs had been something that Mary had seen from the top only and had then used her imagination and some research to write into this beautiful book. So there's so a head-on picture of the hole. Sorry, go ahead, Mary. No, I was going to say, there we're standing looking, looking at that hole, and I wanted to look inside and see. So the other thing you need to remember, too, is that that wall there abuts the, the, where the liquor board store was. So that's the wall between, um, I, I'm not sure, I think it was actually two buildings that were closely abutted to each other like this. And so um, I have climbed up used that pail, that five gallon pail you saw there, we turned it over and I'm looking, peering into that dark space to see the stairs that come down and go to the train station. So that's the first picture. I took that with my phone. Uh, um, it's a little blurry. I'm sure I was shaking with excitement <laughs> to see that. <laughs> we were very excited. This yeah. was just a dream until that moment. So uh, completely unexpected for us. We were thrilled. Yeah. Because we, I think we both visualized Andrea running up and down these stairs as part well, of the story. And she did, and she did. Yeah. in our imagination, in my imagination, yeah. And historical fiction, many, many children did. And what, you know, the tunnel runners in those days would have used these stairs. That's exactly it. So when we finally got some light uh, with Dina's high power fancy camera, uh, <laughs> this is what we saw. And literally it, it took my breath away to see that so what you're seeing there are the stairs that lead up to the part um, we put that other photo in where it says to the train you come you go through those doors and then you would head directly down these stairs right there and so this it was so cool to just be able to see that the floor that's on the top was put in just a few years ago so that they could expand the space in the liquor board store and so that wouldn't have been there you would have had 10, I think it's a flight of 10 steps, and then this little landing, I guess, and then 10 more steps down, and then through a tunnel under the two sets of railway tracks, and then up the other side where you would go and get on your train. Yeah, the passenger trains, there were something like two or three rows of tracks in behind, Moose Jaw still are, uh, yeah. but the passenger uh, level um, was the third track out from the building. So people had to go under down these stairs underneath yeah, the tracks under. through a tunnel, which is where some of the action in this book that in Mary wrote happens. And yeah. then up through this other, other side and a little tiny hut and then get into the passenger train. And you will right. see that as you read the book, you'll be able to visualize that more. But yeah. you know, this, is, this was just a fantastic find. We were so excited to actually see the steps, the stairs, yes that are so integral to this story. And um, the, the and men's washroom that Mary saw um, as part of her original research that was on the main level with the main, um, in the main building, it was just, it was just a wonderful adventure for us. All right. So going back upstairs to the main floor again, this shows you, as I said, this building had been a, a hotel and a fancy dining room. And so just showing you the luxurious, expensive wood on the walls that makes the building look really elegant. Mm -hmm. We are very uh, pleased to that CP and the, the liquor store employees uh, allowed us to take this private tour. We were thrilled that they would go with us and um, take, us, take us down into the underside of their building so we could do more um, exploration and uh, we also heard other stories when we were in Moose Jaw. There were people uh, connected to these buildings who have family members who saw and still can tell stories about the tunnels that were behind pieces in the buildings that they worked in on Main Street Moose Jaw. Mm -hmm. And the people that they interviewed, one gentleman interviewed somebody when he was uh, 
when he was actually in school, he interviewed an elderly man who talked about working for Al Capone in the tunnels below Moose Jaw. Yeah. So yeah. it's just fantastic to be able to put this book out, this historical fiction novel that Mary um, created. And we're looking forward to doing the next a few volumes in this series in the next couple of years. So please watch for that. Um, look for us at driveworks.ca. Follow us on Facebook. You can, Mary's got a page, mm -hmm. uh, Driveworks has yep. a page. And uh, look for the launch video as well. It's a beautiful video um, done with uh, the help of Sask Books. And uh, we are just delighted to invite you along on this journey with us. Yes, thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it. Absolutely.